we are very blessed here in the western slope of Colorado to be surrounded by so much natural beauty. Everywhere you look, you look to the north and you see the book cliffs, you see Mount Garfield, you look to the east and you see the Grand Mesa, you look to the south and the west and you see the Colorado National Monument. So much beauty surrounds us here and I remember when we moved into this area, we were moving from Houston, Texas and for those of you who have been in Houston before, you might have noticed it doesn't have quite the same natural beauty that, uh, that Western Colorado has. Um, this is a wonderful blessing for us because that beauty that we see in creation is a reflection of the beauty of the Creator, is a reflection of the genius of the God who created the heavens and the earth. And very often, I know, we tend to go through life blind to God's presence in his creation. I remember when I was a teenager, my parents would take me on, on trips to do, to do sightseeing. And I, I remember there was a certain, I mean, all of us went through this phase as teenagers where we thought, why do we want to go and see all these sites? I can just look at a photograph of them. It'll be just as good. Um, and I think that I, I at that time, um, was, was blind, I think, to, to the beauty that God has put in his creation. You know, a few years back we went and we took a trip down to the Grand Canyon. Um, and it was just an, such an incredible place to be. And having, having talked to people about the Grand Canyon in the past, I know that there are basically two reactions that people tend to have to the Grand Canyon. They either stand in awe and think this is the most incredible thing I've, I've ever seen in my life, or they say, all right, it's a big hole, and let's, move, and let's move on. How can we be so blind to the beauty that God has placed in his, in his creation that, surround, that surrounds us? It's such a blessing to be able to exist and to be part of that beauty that God has placed in his creation. But so often we're blind to God's presence in the natural world, in his creation. We're also blind, many times, to God's presence in our neighbor. Because all of us have, have people who we can't stand to be around. People who we disagree with, people who we don't like, people whose presence just sort of irritates us. And we have to understand, as Christians, we believe that every human person is made in the image and likeness of God. And in fact, when God created the heavens and the earth, imagine all of the canyons, all of the rivers, all of the lakes, all of this, all of this beauty. When he created the human person, that was his masterpiece that he placed in creation. And so there's more beauty in each human person than there is in, in, in all the rest of creation. Um, but we so often fail to see God's presence in our neighbor. We're blind to the presence of God in those people around us, especially those who we can't stand to be around. And we're blind also, I think, very often to God's presence in our own heart. You know, I, many of us can't stand our neighbors. Uh, many of us, I think, if we are honest with ourselves, um, don't have a lot of, a lot of healthy self-love either. And so we fail to see God's presence within, within our own heart. Through baptism, God himself is dwelling in us through the Holy Spirit. And so, as we've said many times before, our life of prayer as Orthodox Christians is a life of looking within our own heart to find God's presence there. And when we find our Lord Jesus Christ dwelling in our heart, our prayer to him is that he would have mercy on us. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, the sinner. So we're blind very often to God's presence in creation, God's presence in those around us, and we're blind also to God's presence in our own heart. But what do we see in today's gospel reading? We see two men who, just like us, are blind. And they call out to Jesus Christ. Having heard that he was passing by, they call out and say, Have mercy on us, son of David. They desperately want that healing that they know that Jesus Christ 
can offer to them. Have mercy on us, son of David. They cry out to him. Now I think that if you read the Gospels, you will see that in many cases early on, especially, the apostles who Jesus Christ called into his ministry, the apostles who followed after Jesus Christ, were also a little bit in the dark about exactly what was going on. They had a kind of faith, and so they were following Jesus Christ based on that faith, but they did not fully understand until they received the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost. They did not really fully understand who Jesus Christ was. They, too, in a way, were blind to the fact that God himself was standing before them in the person of Jesus Christ. Their eyes were closed to the presence of God who had come down into his creation to be with those people who he loved, which is each and every one of us. And so this past week, on Thursday, we celebrated the Feast of the Transfiguration. And on the day of the Transfiguration, our Lord takes his disciples, Peter, James, and John, And he goes with them up to the peak of Mount Tabor. Mount Tabor is in the north of Israel. It's near to the city of of, of Nazareth. It's near to the region of of, of Cana. If you go there today, it is a very popular uh, hang gliding place. We saw lots of people doing that when we were there. Jesus Christ goes to the peak of Mount Tabor with Peter, James, and John. And there they behold him in his glory. They see a bright light surrounding him. They see him transfigured before him. What does this word transfigured mean? In Greek, the word is metamorphosis, uh, which means a change in form, a change in form. But this word can be a little bit, a little bit deceptive, I think. Why do I say that? Because when the disciples saw the glory of Jesus Christ on the day of the transfiguration, Jesus Christ did not change whatsoever. The glory that the disciples saw in him was the glory that he always had as the very God who created the heavens and the earth. But their eyes were closed to that glory. They were blind to that glory that was standing right in front of them. And so on the day of the transfiguration, Jesus Christ opened their eyes, at least for that brief moment, Jesus Christ took away their blindness so that they could see Jesus Christ in his glory and having seen him in his glory might come to recognize his presence throughout creation. And so too, we who are blind to the glory of God which surrounds us and which upholds us Let us today pray to him just like those blind men did. Let us pray to him, have mercy on us, son of David. Lord Jesus Christ, son of God, have mercy on us who are sinners. Because when those blind men called to Jesus and asked him for his mercy, he who is greatly merciful was quick to offer them his grace. He was quick to offer them his healing. He comes to them, he comes right into their house, and he says to them, do you believe that I am able to do this? And they respond with faith, yes, Lord. And according to their faith, Jesus Christ offers them that healing. Their eyes are opened. They behold Jesus Christ. And what an amazing blessing they were given to have seen nothing until their eyes were opened and the very first thing they see, having been cured from their blindness, is Jesus Christ himself. We who are blind to the presence of God and creation around us, let us pray that Christ would give us this same blessing, that Christ would give us this same healing. 
that Christ would open our spiritual eyes so that when we look at the beauty and creation around us, we might see that beauty not simply for its own sake, but as a reflection of the genius of its creator, as a reflection of the beauty of God himself. And so that when we look at our neighbor, we might see not simply their eccentricities, not simply the things about them that, that bother us, that irritate us, but instead we could look past those things to see the presence of God who dwells within them. And we might bow down and venerate the presence of God in that person just as we do in the holy icons. And so too, let us pray that God would open our spiritual eyes so that when we look into our own heart, we might see not simply the things we don't like about ourselves, not simply the darkness that in some cases we might have stored up there, but we might see Christ himself who dwells within us through the Holy Spirit. Let us pray that God would open our eyes to his presence around us so that we could become whole and spiritually well. Amen.